Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Well, it is full on tomato harvesting season in our garden. They're just starting to ripen everywhere. So this morning, I'm going to harvest a bunch of the tomatoes from the garden. There are so many I actually need help. I think Kevin and maybe one or both of the girls are gonna come out and help me um, harvest, but we're gonna start putting them up and I wanna show you how. We've been harvesting tomatoes about every other day for about a week or so and we have gotten about four boxes full of tomatoes so far but today there are a lot more tomatoes ripe and ready to come into the house so we'll just have to see what we can get it might be that much just today first row of tomatoes gave us one full box. There's even a couple uh, that I laid on top of each other, which I normally don't do, but I just wanted to show you how many tomatoes came from this one row. Now this row is our favorite type of tomato called Jetstar, and uh, it just does wonderful for us every year. Well, we're getting to the time of year where the heat and humidity is just really taking its toll on the tomato plants. They're getting a lot of blight or some type of fungal disease. And you can see these bottom leaves are all starting to die out. Now, to be honest, this is just part of growing tomatoes in a hot and humid climate. Uh, we fought it the first few years that we were here. We tried everything we could, but after talking to people who have lived here in the Ozarks their entire lives, uh, we've come to the conclusion that this is just really part of growing tomatoes here. Now early in the season we do spray with copper to try to slow the progression of this down. But once it gets to this point, which it does every year, uh, there's really not much you're going to do. All of these tomatoes that are still on here are going to ripen just fine. You know, these leaves are starting to look bad, but the vines themselves are still pretty strong. So, um, you know, all of these top leaves are still looking good. There's plenty of leaves for the plants to still get uh, sunlight for photosynthesis. So all of this stuff is still gonna ripen, uh, but pretty much when these, all of these green ones are done, the plants will be done for the year. But that will be more than enough than we need, uh, which is why we always plant, you know, 100 tomato plants, so that we get as much as we need in a very short amount of time. Well, maybe I was a little overzealous to think that we would get four boxes of tomatoes, but we did get two very full boxes and a partial basket. Now the tomatoes that are in the basket are paste tomatoes and they are best for sauces. These two boxes of the slicing tomatoes we'll be using for mostly diced tomatoes, but we also do a lot of tomato juice. Well, it's time to bring our nice harvest into the house. Today, we are gonna be canning diced tomatoes. I'll be using a pressure canner, and so I hope you learn a lot today. Now that we're back in the house and I can see all of the tomatoes that we have in here, it really motivates me to start putting some of these in jars and getting them set and ready for the winter. Now, I told you a few minutes ago when we were in the garden that I prefer to pressure can tomatoes, these diced tomatoes. You don't have to pressure can them. You can water bath can them, but there are a few reasons why I prefer to pressure can them. The first reason is I feel like the pressure canning actually makes a better seal on the jar. Sometimes in the past when I have water bath canned diced tomatoes, I felt like when I was popping them off the jar, it didn't seem like they were sealed really hard and I feel like the pressure canner does a better job at that. Also, when you pressure can these diced tomatoes, the pressure canning 
processing time is less than in a water bath canner. Now, when I can these diced tomatoes, and I'll show you when we get to this part, I don't add any boiling water. I just pack them uh, completely in there, and there are directions how to do that in my favorite canning book. So it's okay to do this. I don't add any boiling water. I just pack as many tomatoes as I can down in there, and the juice of the tomatoes ends up being the water portion. But it does increase the processing time on the water bath canner significantly, but it only increases it a little bit in the pressure canner. So I feel like it's a time saver to pressure can them. The last reason I really like to pressure can tomatoes is because between my smaller Presto canner and my big All-American canner, I can be canning 21 quarts of diced tomatoes at a time, and I wouldn't be able to do that many at a time with the water bath canner. So overall, it saves me time. But if using a pressure canner is too intimidating for you, please know that there is a safe way to can tomatoes using the water bath canner. The first step in canning these tomatoes is to core them and to get the skins off. So let's get started on that. So coring tomatoes really means to cut the little stem part out, kind of about maybe a half an inch to an inch down inside of the tomato, because that section doesn't really taste very good and it's kind of hard. Now there are a couple ways you can do this that are very easy. All of them are very easy, but I just want to show you a couple different ways and to gadgets that are kind of neat to use. Now, the old fashioned way of coring a tomato is to just use a paring knife. You just stick it in there in the tomato around the stem part and pop the core out like that. Perfect. But there are two gadgets that I have been using over the years that I really like. Uh, one is uh, specifically a, a tomato corer. I guess you could use it for other things. Uh, you can get these on Amazon in different styles and shapes, and some of them actually have like plastic here so that over time this doesn't dig into your hands if you're doing a bunch of tomatoes like we do. And you just use it, you take the little jagged edge, put it around the tomato like that. It's kind of like a melon baller. Takes the core out. That's pretty slick. But something new that I've tried just recently is actually a little strawberry corer. Now, one of our subscribers just recently sent this to me to use for strawberries, but I decided to use it for tomatoes to try it out. Now, this is what it looks like, and there's a button you press, and the metal part opens up. You can put that in the tomato, let go, turn it around, and pull out the core. Let me show you. Opens up. Stick that down into the core, let go, put it around, there you go, it comes out. Pretty easy. Now, we have to do this to all of the tomatoes and the pigs are going to be so happy to have all of these tomato cores. Now if you want to try out either of these two fun gadgets, we'll make sure that you can check them out in our Amazon shop. Okay, it's time for me to get down to business. All of the tomatoes that we're starting with today are cored and I have them in two bowls next to me here. So we're going to get the skins off of the tomatoes and we're going to do that by plunging them into boiling water. Once the skins split off, which you'll be able to see, you're going to take them out of the boiling water and put them in cold water. Now you can use ice water, but cold water will do just fine if you don't have a lot of ice. When the cold water warms up a little bit, I'll just dump it out and get some fresh. So, time to take this off of here. The water is boiling hard. I'm gonna start by just putting, oh, half a dozen or so tomatoes in here. I caution you not to just drop them, ooh, drop them into the water because it'll splash out and burn your arms. Guess how I know that. Well, I wasn't counting, but that's about enough. I'm gonna stir those around a little bit and just to cook until you see that the skins have burst and are peeling off. This one is already done. 
Hope you can see that the skin is falling off of that and I'm going to put it in the cold water. After they cool down in the water, in the cold water, the skins will just slip off like a dream. Now sometimes if you're doing this with tomatoes that aren't very ripe, the skins don't come off very well. Which is one of the biggest reasons why after I harvest them orange, I let them ripen in the house a couple of days before I do this with them. Here's the last one. Now while these cool in here until I can touch them, I'm just going to put the lid back on my pot so it could come back to a boil. Take the skins off and put these in a different bowl. I kind of have a little assembly line going here. So then we just start all over again. Okay, the tomatoes are cored, they're peeled, and we're ready to start dicing them. But before that, we need to prepare our jars. I'm gonna be pressure canning seven quart jars today in one of my canners, in one of my Presto canners. And before we start filling them with the tomatoes, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of citric acid to every jar. Now, uh, even though we're gonna be pressure canning and these are kind of on the edge of being a low acid food, even, even though we're pressure canning them, the instruction says to add some citric acid, I don't know exactly why, but I am going to follow the instructions. So a half a teaspoon of citric acid to every jar. Now optional is some salt. And I don't always add salt when I'm canning, but um, I've found over the years that I, I really like having the salt in each jar ahead of time so that the uh, contents are already pre-seasoned. So, uh, the recommended amount that you can put in each jar is up to one teaspoon of salt. Now we use pink Himalayan salt and we get that in bulk from a company called Azure Standard. And if you want to know more about buying in bulk from them, uh, you can look in the description section of this video. We buy lots of things in bulk from them a lot of dried bulk goods like beans and rice, but also a lot of the spices and seasonings. Okay, we're all finished with that so we can get started dicing up our tomatoes and filling our jars. Now there is no magic formula or no magic way to dice tomatoes the right way, the wrong way, just dice them up the way you like it done. If you like them smaller, if you like them bigger, that's fine, just do whatever you want. So just dice them up and uh, start filling your jar. We're gonna fill up each jar to about the one inch mark, but tomatoes can be kind of tricky when you're canning them, whether you're canning them um, in a pressure canner or a water bath canner because they can easily siphon out if you're not careful. So I would go on the generous one inch mark um, just to help prevent the siphoning from happening. And by siphoning, I mean sometimes the pressure and the heat of the, the contents of a jar like tomatoes is so great that it will cause the liquid within the jar to kind of rush out the top and compromise the seal around there. Now, most of the time the seal is just fine and uh, your canning is done safely, but you want to try to perfect the process as much as possible so that you can minimize the amount of siphoning. So my point is make sure that there's plenty of room, a generous inch of space between the bottom of your tomatoes and the top of your jar. Now we're getting to the top of this jar. Now normally, 
we'd be getting ready to add some boiling water to this, but we're not going to. This is just raw pack tomatoes only. So now that we're close, I'm gonna use a chopstick to poke down in there and start bringing all of those air bubbles to the top. Press the tomato mixture down in there, add more tomatoes until it's to the right height. Now remember, we're going for a generous inch. So I might add a little bit more, but not much because I don't want these things to siphon out the top. That's as far as I am going to go. Now when we're going through the canning process and the cooling down process, I'll go over some more tips and tricks to try to prevent this from siphoning out. So make sure you stick around. Okay, now this jar is full. We just have the remaining six jars to fill up. Well, that amount of tomatoes was perfect to fill up the seven jars that I'm in a process. I had three tomatoes left that didn't get used. I'll use them another time. But one of those produce boxes basically produces seven quart jars of diced tomatoes for me. So I'm gonna set this aside. I went ahead and got my pressure canner out and filled with the appropriate amount of water. Make sure you look at your owner's manuals to figure out how much water to put in there. Generally, the Presto canners like this have a mark on the bottom on the inside of the liquid level, but on the All-American canners, it's about two or three inches, they tell you. But like I said, check out your owner's manuals. Now, I just wanted to take a quick second to talk with you about the three canners that I have. I actually have a really in-depth video about these three canners and I try to take the fear out of pressure canning in that video but I just want to tell you quickly the difference. This Presto canner holds about seven quarts, six sometimes if you're using the wide mouth and generally holds ten pints or I think eight or nine if you use the wide mouth. I generally use regular mouth uh, jars. This here is also a Presto canner. It's taller. It has a dial gauge versus just the toggle top or whatever that's called, the weight that jiggles back and forth. Uh, this also holds seven quart jars, but it will double stack pint jars. So you can do 18 or 20 pint jars. There's another rack that separates the two levels. Now way over here in the corner, this big beast over here, this is an all American canner. I love this, but it is a heavy beast. Uh, I love it mostly because it holds 14 quart jars and 20 pint jars, so I can really do a bunch of canning. And on my propane stove here, I can have my All-American canner here and one of my Presto canners here. I really get some serious canning going. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly tell you about these that um, are available out there. And if you have a lot of anxiety about pressure canning, make sure you check out that video of mine. Okay, so let's get going on these jars. So we just need to finish getting these jars ready to put into the canner. We need to wipe off the rim of each of these jars to make sure there's no bits of tomatoes on there. Put on your lid, a brand new lid, and put on uh, this ring. Now, one reason you want to make sure that you don't have any rust on your rings is because the rust on the ring will prevent it from tightening down really well, which will prevent a good seal, and that will give it another reason to siphon inside of there. So at the beginning of canning season, uh, make sure you start with new rings, and as you're using them throughout the season, replace them if they start getting rusty. Okay, these are all finished. Now we can put these into the canner and get them going. They're all in, so we're just gonna put the top on the lid, twist it, and we're gonna turn the heat on high. And we're gonna wait for steam to come out of this hole. Now while we are waiting for that to come up to temperature, I want to talk with you a little bit more specifically about the difference between processing this tomato recipe in a water bath canner versus a pressure canner. 
and both ways are in my favorite canning book and you can find this in my Amazon shop. It's called The Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. There are 400 recipes in here. I love it. It has great recipes in it. It has really good instructions for both how to water bath can and how to pressure can. Now, if we were doing this recipe, raw pack, no water, in a water bath canning situation, we would need to process them in a water bath canner for 85 minutes. Now with pressure canning, this same recipe, raw pack, no boiling water, the quarts need to process for uh, 25 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure or 15 pounds of pressure for me because of our altitude. So even though it's gonna take a little bit of time to get up to temperature with a pressure canner and then come down from pressure after it's done, I really do feel like you're saving time with the pressure canner. Plus, like I said before, I feel like the seal is a lot stronger, uh, so there's less opportunity for that seal to break. The other thing that is important to note this time of year, because it's hot, and even though we have air conditioning, it still gets hot in the kitchen when I'm canning, having that boiling water, the hot water canner going, putting that steam into the kitchen makes things a lot hotter than a pressure canner. So think about it, you guys. I think it might be more popular to water bath can your tomatoes, but think about doing pressure canning. I swear it's not that hard. And as soon as you're comfortable with doing it a couple times, you will absolutely love pressure canning. And it completely opens up more canning opportunities for you to do for you and your family and for your homestead or for your farm. Now that the canner is venting steam out of it, we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. We're gonna let it continue doing that for 10 minutes. Now, if this starts just pouring out here so crazy and hard, then we're gonna turn down the heat a little bit. You don't want all of that pressure in there. It will, again, heat up the contents of your jars too much and it could cause that to siphon out. So as it gets going hotter and hotter, continue to turn it down just a little bit. Our timer has gone off. So now we're gonna put the, our weight on top here. So now I'm gonna turn the heat back up to high and we're waiting for the pressure to build. When it builds, this little thing here will pop up and the pressure will continue to build. As soon as this weight starts to rock back and forth, we will start our timer. Okay, it's time for us to start our timer for 25 minutes. Now, just like when the steam was starting to come out of here, I told you to gradually turn down the heat. As the pressure builds within here, and this starts going back and forth, back and forth, more and more, you'll want to gradually start turning down the heat. You'll want the heat to be the lowest it can and still produce that gentle rocking back and forth. This already is rocking a little bit more than it needs to be, so I'm gonna start turning it down. Another tip, don't turn it down too fast. That quick fluctuation in temperature and pressure can also cause your contents to quickly come out of the jar. Well, time is up. We can turn off the heat altogether and now we just wait for the pressure to come down inside the pressure canner. We'll know it has done that when this little valve here drops down. The pressure lock just fell down just a couple seconds ago, but I am gonna give it like 10 minutes before I pull this weight off. The timer has gone off. I'm gonna turn that off. And so now I'm gonna take off the weight. Now my instruction manual says that just after a couple minutes I can take the lid off, but I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes. And then when it's time to take the lid off, I'm actually not gonna take it off all the way. I'm just gonna turn it and take it and set it back on there just so some of the air can get down in there. I know it might sound extreme, but I have struggled with siphoning tomatoes with pressure canning and with water bath canning, so I really wanna take extra measures to make sure that doesn't happen. Now I've waited the 10 minutes. I'm just gonna turn the lid here, lift it up a little bit, and set it back down kind of on top of itself so that just a little bit of cool air can get down in there. Just 
start cooling those off very slowly. Well, I think I've been careful enough. I think I've waited enough time to make sure that the tomatoes are not gonna siphon out of the jar when I take them out. So let's take them out of the canner. Did it surprise you when I took them out of the canner to see all of the tomatoes just way up on top and all the liquid on the bottom? I just wanna let you know that after these are completely sealed and cooled, when you're washing them up and everything, you can just take the jar, mix it up like that, and it'll look a lot better, you guys. So don't even worry about that. You guys, I hope you enjoyed watching me harvest and can some of our homegrown tomatoes. This is really one of my favorite times of year. I hope you learned something and I hope that maybe I took some of the fear or anxiety about pressure canning away and maybe you will be inspired to try one day soon. You guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Remember to subscribe and share our videos. We would appreciate it. And until next time, take care and God bless.